have one new message. Uh, hi. It's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story. That if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. I'm on my way to Hong Kong now. To finish something I should have faced a long time ago. And I need you with me. I know we're not blood, and we didn't leave things in a good place. But you and Duncan are the only real family I have. Please. If our past means anything to you, meet me in Hong Kong right away. I'll explain more when you get here. I'm begging you. out of time. Hard landing. Raymond Black, the old man gave you a, a home once. Took you and Duncan off the gang-ridden streets of the Barrens. Sheltered, educated, slapped some sense into the both. Until you almost resembled productive members of society. And then you took off. Left it all behind. Landed behind bars for a time. Tried to start a new life after that. It's been eight years since you've heard Raymond's voice. Until out of the blue, you got this cryptic message. A plea for help. Meet me in Hong Kong right away. And wired to your account enough Nui to pay for the flight. And then some. The descent is rough. A squall comes out of nowhere. Sending a solid sheet of rain punching into the suborbital transport. With a ragged shudder, the plane finally skids to a halt at the edge of the Czech Lap Cock Tarmac. An hour and an intermediable number of emotionless security checkpoints later, you hail a water taxi to Victoria Harbour. Hong Kong looms ahead, pulsing with energy. Hong Kong, Victoria Harbour, August 2056, monsoon season. You step from the churning of the water taxi to the ponderous rocking of the docks, your stomach lurching at the transition. As soon as you're clear, the captain nods once and steers the small craft back to the harbour. The man never said a word, just handed you a worn brown duffel bag when you stepped on board filled with gear. Some stiff new body armour and a note. Better safe than sorry. D. Above, smog thick clouds hang low in the sky, reflecting the light of the city in a nauseating swirl. The wind changes direction more than once, creating a heady stew of aromas, diesel, sea salt, street food, and filth. It's all you can do to keep your in-flight in meal where it belongs. Two figures stand waiting in the dim light of the pier. The first is an orc, lean, with in-your-face muscles, and a jaw made to break fists. The second is an elf, one hand resting casually against her hip. Raymond Black is nowhere to be seen. Well, don't you look like shit. Duncan Wu, the closest thing you have to a brother. You haven't seen the man in eight years, still as charming as ever. He grins. Green's not really your colour, Sam. Doesn't go with the nice new armour I got you. As you open your mouth to respond, something shifts alarmingly in your stomach. A liquid bubbling sensation. Don't know what you're talking about. Must be must be the harbour lights messing with you. 
Must be. Guess you've still got your old fortitude at least. He laughs. Considering how much synthahol we used to put down, I'd be surprised if you couldn't handle a little chop. Anyway, we got we gotta find Raymond. Find Raymond? I thought he'd be here. Never showed up. He still got that same baritone rasp. Had it since he was twelve, where he developed early. Did you try him on Com? Nah. Just been walking around the dock shouting his name. He says it as a joke, but there's a note of concern in his voice. I've been trying him for the last hour. No answer. You worried? Yeah, I'm worried. Where he rubs his head. He's an old man. He's out there alone somewhere. Ray's a smart guy. He can take care of himself. The orc bows his head. His voice sounds far away. He's not the same, Sam. Raymond hasn't been himself in a long time. How so? He's been restless, staying in his study, inside his own head a lot, and he barely sleeps anymore. I've been worried about him, but I haven't figured out what to do about it. He looks up at you and shrugs. And I didn't have a sister to turn to. Hell, wasn't too sure if you were even alive still, until Raymond managed to track down your number. Woman standing beside him breaks in. We shall get going, Duncan. Head back to the meeting point in case your dad shows up. Copy that, Sarge. They're wearing Lone Star body armor. Looks like Duncan Wu's gone private police. You his girlfriend or something? Oh, hell no. The corner of her mouth flicks upward in amusement. I'm his partner. The woman taps her chest with an armored finger. Carter. I figured I could use some backup. Didn't know what Raid got himself into, and I wasn't sure you were going to show up. Tossed off remark, but there's an undercurrent of resentment in it. You got something you want to say? Nope. He shakes his head. Hey look, I'm glad you're here, Sam. Seriously. But I'm going to need some time to get used to having you around again. Been a while since I heard from you. Know what I mean? Memories of sleepless night in lockup flash by. Wondering if you'd ever see Duncan or Raymond again. Wondering if you ever wanted to. And then, stepping out of stepping out into the daylight, suddenly free, the fallout of some obscure corporate restructuring, a few hundred million worth of apology from the former jailers and a decision to start a new life, to leave the past behind, all of it, until now. I know I've been out of touch. Rui stares at you, his goggles reflecting the harbour lights. You could say that, yeah. He scans the waterfront, frowning. Let's just find Raymond. He was supposed to meet us at the plaza on the other side of this pier. The sooner we find him, the sooner... You all can have a big happy family reunion over dinner. Carter grins. And the sooner I can find a place to get a drink around here. Damn right. Ahead of you. Hong Kong rice is serpent-like from the sea. Government and megacorp coiled together, writhing in the basket of institutionalized corruption. No one can tell where the snake's body ends and its tail begins. That's what Raymond used to say. Duncan turns and starts down the pier. Carter follows. Alrighty, so we're in the beginning part of this game. Is there anything here? Mm. The gate is locked, but the nearby control panel appears accessible. Carter pulls it open with a metallic screech that pierces your skull, sending a new wave of pain down your charming stomach. She examines the control panel for a moment, when then throws Wu a backwards glance. Looks like there's a way off the docks on the other side of this gate. I think I can bypass the lock. Let me take a crack at it. Carter steps aside and lets you get at the panel. Enjoy. This is a civil area. The security is light. You bypass the door circuit with ease. The gate rattles open. Ooh. Shouting in Cantonese.
The grip of the dock was flashing a package out of a speedboat when you surprised them. Now the package is at the bottom of the bay and the speedboat is disappearing into the distance. They close in on you, red faced and yelling. The light of the harbour glints off their weapons as they approach. The leader shouts something in Cantonese, but it's too fast to make out. You're rusty. It's been years. Since Raymond's house and the language lesson that wouldn't end, the old man never spoke anything but his native language at home. Wu speaks with authority. His Cantonese is as solid as ever. He never let it drop. You guys doing some late night fishing? <clears throat> the smuggler smiles. Oh yeah, we're fishing for assholes. Wu points at their weapons. You're gonna need some better bait. All you're gonna catch is... All you're gonna catch with that is trouble. Whispered to Duncan. Seriously? Who taught you that at Rent-A-Corp school? He turns to you with a smile starting on his face. Think... Then he thinks better of it. Turns back to the smugglers. Wu flashes his badge. Learn stop. Put the guns down. The smuggler squints at, at Wu's badge. Then smiles at his friends. Never seen a badge like that before. Either it's fake or you, you're some kind of security guard. He grasps his rifle. Either way, it ends the same. I think he's done talking. You are now in turn-based combat. Close. I already know what I'm doing from the last match. I don't have cover there, but I will have some here. Uh, let's go with Duncan here. And let's go black. Nope, that one was a miss. Well, that's okay. If I go here... Oh yeah, I forgot she's a mage. That failed. Mana Bolt, the powerful magic bolt that pierces up to two armor. Oh, it's an AoE ability. Sweet. But I'm useless with pistols, so there is that. Um, I'm going to get you to heal yourself and then mana bolt him. Another bit of damage. That's another miss. Five damage. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> Sure, okay, I, I'm not gonna stop that at all. I'm gonna stop you. Kills friends. Nah, knew I wasn't gonna get that. There we go. Oh yeah, and the doors just magically disappear somehow. See, look how pretty it is. Look at look at how nice some of these shops look. Look at all of that. that see, now this, I, I like this kind of thing. The light from the nearby vendor stall stabs into your eyes, triggering the throbbing ache in the back of your skull. You stop short, squinting as rough voices drift in the wind. Where is everyone else? Where's that damn shipment? I haven't seen them yet. We just got here. The voice becomes irritated. Long way's probably waiting for us, so we can haul it out of the boat for him. That lazy bastard. Let's just hang out here. Let him find out. Looks like it's, we're on a stroll through Smugglers Central. The gangers don't know we're here. We could probably just slip past. Yes, I did indeed. Gonna be a failure. Oh, I hit him. Sweet. Your friend Raymond never showed. We've been waiting for the better part of an hour. You were going to meet with Raymond? Mm-hmm. So you were his tour guides, right? The troll's yellow-brown tusks shift in a smile again. Kinda, yeah. The old man hired us to take you all on an excursion. With his brow furrows. Who hired you? He takes a moment and looks them over. 
With an odd assortment, a cybered up troll, an orc girl with magical fetishes, a dwarf with a cyber deck slung on her back, and the elf, and a tall elf standing behind them, qu quietly inscrutable, all with guns trained on Wu. Understanding spreads across Wu's face, his jaw tines. Your shadow runners. Mm hmm? The troll nods. Wu's shoulders creep up, his stance tightens. This is bullshit, Raymond. Would never hire Shadowrunners. They're criminals. The troll corrects him. Mercenary operatives. The dwarf cuts in her voice is soft but strong. Criminals. Mercenary operatives. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. Your buddy Raymond was associating with a bunch of hardened criminals. The troll tosses Wu a sideways smile while staring down the barrel of his gun. Sorry to burst your bubble, Lone Star. Guess you didn't know the old man as well as you thought, huh? Wu tries to shake it off, but he struggles to process the information. You can feel the heat coming off him. The runners sense it too, but they tense up tight. They're keyed on Duncan, and their guns are big. The looks on their faces make it clear. One wrong bead of sweat and Wu's going down in a red mist cloud. Carter remains completely still. Her voice is level, moderate. She's done this before. Let's stay focused. No need for this to get ugly. She speaks quietly to Wu, who listens without turning his focus squarely on the troll. We need to find Raymond. These are, are the people who came to help us. This was about money, right? Let's talk about money. The troll is wary but willing. He lifts the barrel of his gun slightly. I like talking about money. You can tell the orc girl's had enough of the tension. She just blurts it out. The old man wanted us to take him into Kulong Walled City. She waves her hand at the three of you. You too. Two large rats cling clinging to her hip and shoulder, poke their head out of the fault of her clothing. They fix their beady eyes on you intently. You know the walled city? Uh, slum, right? I've heard of it. The girl sneers, rolling her eyes. It's a shithole. The worst slum in the eastern hemisphere. Memories of growing up in the Redmond Barrens flash through your mind. We get it. It's a real bad place. Now why would a little old man pay you to take him there? The dwarf standing to her nods and jumps in. Wouldn't say. He mumbled a lot too. Just kept rambling on about how he had to get in. Under ordinary circumstances I would never would have accepted the gig. The walled city's the last place I want to go. But the old man rolled up a truckload of new yen and you gotta eat right? Wu risks a glance at you. His weapon remains strained on the shadow runners, but a fi flicker of uncertainty plays across his face. Interesting story. Seems like a good time to ramp down the threat violence, don't you think? The troll flashes you a smile. That's all tusk and no warmth. Okay, gang. I'll tell you what. We're gonna put our guns down and... Blech. Aww. The sound of high caliber rifle shots hang in the air and the red dot laser sweeps the area. Carter, the troll, and the silent elf lie dead in widened pools of blood, their heads broken open like melons dropped from four story building. The orc girl screams in cover. Nightjar! Nightjar, come on! Big man, talk to me! Got shot? No! No! She turns to the dwarf, her eyes wild with fear. Oh shit, Liz, this isn't good. A voice blares out of the loudspeaker. This is the police. Lay down your weapons. Put your hands behind your head and come out where we can see you. Duncan Wu, Sam McSamface, the five quarters. Come on out we can see, so we can see you. You have three seconds. Duncan crouches behind cover. His gaze locked on Carter's corpse. His voice comes out in a hoarse roar. Stand down, damn it! I'm law enforcement, Lone Star, Lone Star! He's driven deeper into cover by a hail of gunshot. The dwarf shakes her head at him. Her voice is flat. Save your breath. They won't listen. Use your eyes, these bastards aren't here to make arrests. 
a sniper shot hits the wall next to her head, showing her in an exposed explosion of plaster. Showering her in an explosion of plaster. <sighs> we need a way out of here, now! Everyone pipe down, just give me a minute. The red girl stares at the ground intently, as if listening. Then her brow furls, furrows, her eyes go beady, and her nose wrinkles up. She begins to sway backwards and forwards, her hips moving soundlessly. She snaps out of her trance. Okay, I've got a way out. It's at the end of the street. Everyone, come with me. Everyone? I don't need the renter cop. We don't need the renter cops, Gobbit. We're the only ones. The little orc whips her head towards her friend. Their extra firepower, Izzy. We gotta use an exit, but we're gonna get past the heat. We can't shoot our way out of this on our own. If nothing else, they'll, they can soak up a few rounds for us. She turns her, to you, her pupils pinpricks of intensity. Just stick to cover and keep close. Their door, there's a door down the street that leads to a back alley. That's our exit point. You fall behind, you get left behind. Hmm. This isn't a particularly nice uh, scenario to be in. But at least there, I can see the, uh, the magic circles that are probably going to help. I don't think that's going to reach across, but that's still better than nothing. What's Duncan got? There's hardcover there. Gobbit. She can go there. And... Yeah, there's nothing really much I can do at this point. If I remember correctly, the start of this is rough. Especially for a tutorial mission. Can I... Oh, I can. I'm just in insanely stupid. That's one. That's two hits. Come on. Damn it, not enough. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot you had this. Alright, so, are you able to... There we go. You should be able to... And I'll get you to move there. Deactivate the drones. You can go there. And let's see what you can do here. Mana ball. How rude. Escape. Let's escape. The rat shaman guides you from the sh from the doorways on the streets through an eternity of winding alleys, damp sub basements, and in empty buildings. Stumbling through refuse and filth, you make your way into the sewers below Victoria Harbour. It reeks down here, but it's quiet. Gobbit stops, sniffs, and wipes her eyes with the back of her wrist. Her rat squeaks softly in the fault of her clothing. The dwarf watches her silently for the moment. Then moves closer and gently takes her hand. In the dim light of the sewer, you can see they're nearly the same age. No more than 20. 21 tops. What were their names? She keeps her head down and tells it to the floor. The troll you were talking. The troll. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still trying to find a good voice for her. The troll. <clears throat> the troll you were talking to was Nightjar. He was our friend. The elf was called Gutshot. Kind of an asshole, but I didn't need to see his head splattered everywhere like that. She inhales in cleansing breath. Nightjar was a good guy. Always had our backs. Isabel's and mine. Isabel nods in agreement. Her voice is flat. 
rare to find a runner that you can actually trust. She looks to her friend. Are we clear? Gobbit looks back the way you came. I think we sh I think we're shaking them. She sniffs the air. <laughs> yeah, we're clear. She begins pacing. Or he begins pacing, his boots splashing in the sewer water, creating echoes down the tunnel. You can feel the tension coming off him in waves. This is bullshit. I'm done messing around in the alley sewers. I'm done running from the cops. He pokes a thumb at the at his chest and spits in anger forth in a raspy growl. For fuck's sake, I am a cop. We we've noticed. There's a lone star sergeant dead back there. Damn it, she was. Where he starts to choke up, he struggles against it, fighting to maintain control, but he needs a minute to recover. He finally manages to pull it together, but he's raw. When he speaks again, his voice is seething and hoarse. I don't know what the hell's going on here with the Hong Kong corpse, but I'm calling in some lone star backup from home. I'm going to get some of my own people down here. Then we're gonna find Raymond and figure out what the hell's going on. The little orc shrugs. Whatever you say, big guy. You have fun with that. She looks over at her friend. They both nod. Is an IR out here. Best of luck finding your friend. Your people died in a hail of sniper fire. You're not gonna do anything about it? Of course we're gonna do something about it. In fact, we're going... We're gonna do two things. Run and hide. Looks like your safety... Looks like we've got you to safety. But now we are done with this shit. We don't intend to die for you. Wiz isn't listening. You can see on his face that he's already written the orc girl off. He pulls his security grade PDA from his holster and his left leg raises it and starts tapping the buttons with a meaty finger. The Lone Star logo on the back of the device looks shiny and official. He stops, confused, and then taps it harder. The red flashing image on his PDA reflects in his goggles. What the hell? I'm locked out of the network? He looks up to you. My law enforcement status has been revoked. He goes back to the screen. I don't believe... <clears throat> I don't believe it. This is saying there's an APB out on us, Sam. You and me both. I figured as much. I heard them on the loudspeaker. They knew our names. We glares at the wall in a storm raging across his face. Fucking hell. His hand clenches into a fist around his PDA. This just keeps getting worse. He leans forward as if to punch the wall. His knuckles wrap it against it softly. A pantomime of barely constructed constrained rage. Suddenly, he turns and slings his PDA at the wall. It hits hard, bounces back and clatters on the ground at his feet. He looks down at it. The orc mouths okay to herself, eyebrows raised. And on that note, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Come on, Isabel, let's... She's cut off by a sudden smashing noise as her friend's boot comes crashing down on the PDA at Wu's feet. That the wolf looks down at her work, unsatisfied, and brings her boot down it again and again and again. Until there's nothing left but a snarl of plastic housing, broken glass, and circuit boards. She looks up at Wu, her chest heaving, and points at the pile of scrap she created. Police, police issued. They can trace you through that. She turns to you, hand out. Yours too. It's on the network. Smash it yourself. We bury our own. You crush the PDA to shards un under your foot while Isabel looks on blankly. Good. She looks over at Gobbit, sighs when reaches into her jacket pocket, pulls out two PDAs. She hands them to you and Duncan. Burners, I suppose it's the, the least we can do after your help back there. Thanks. You people always keep a supply of burners in your pocket? Runners need to be prepared for contingencies, isn't that right, Is Isabel isn't listening. She is staring open mouth at her PDA, its bluish glow illuminating her horrified expression. Cobbett, we gotta run. We gotta go. Right now. 
Isabel's voice is monotone, but emphatic. She holds her PDA and shows her friend. They're after us, too. Her screen displays a local newcast. Your own face stares back at you from the upper corner of the screen. And in breaking news, just under an hour ago, Hong Kong Port Authorities were involved in a firefight with members of the terrorist cell linked to the mainland city-state of Henan. The battle left three terrorists dead, along with an unconfirmed number of Hong Kong police officers. Your image winks out, replaced by a scowling image of Duncan Wu, a mugshot from a long time ago, before Raymond. All sources report that the Seattle natives Duncan Wu and Sam McSamface, the 5 4th, along with their Hong Kong based accomplices, are still at large. They are still well armed and should be considered extremely dangerous. Low res pho photographs of Gobbit and Isabel pop up on screen, replacing Duncan Wu. The color drains out of Gobbit's face. Oh shit! Kowloon officials report that the terrorist cell, known as the White Star, maintains ties to the state of Henan, and it is pur purported to be received weapons and funding from the anti-corporate groups in the UCAS city-state of Seattle. Port of Authorities are standing on high alert, and the Hong Kong Police Force's Special Duties Unit has been engaged to deal with the threat. We've Go, we go live now to Chief Inspector Crate of the Special Duties Unit, who will make a statement. Behind the Newcaster, a, a video window displays the location of your firefight in Victoria Harbour. The camera pans to the Chief Inspector Crate. She is surrounded by a swarm of new reporters, but appears unfazed by the attention. She speaks with supreme confidence. Chief Inspector Crate. We have yet to ascertain the motivation for tonight's attack. But it was clearly a well-planned and coordinated effort. Crate sounds smooth. More like a corporate mouthpiece than a cop. I've already issued all the point bulletins along with kill or capture order for the remaining terrorists. And I have instructed the special duties on unit to make this manhunt a top priority. She looks directly into the camera. If you should see one or more of these individuals, do not attempt to engage them. Instead, tap in the... HKPF flash code at the bottom of your screen. If you are authorized network and take a picture of our system, we'll automatically identify them in your data stream. The deck switches off the newcaster and clips her PDA back onto her belt. For the moment, there's no sound but a roar of sewer water rushing through the pipes. Gobbit hands are over, hands on her knees, sucking wind. Her rats scurry for a new position. I thought we were fucked before. Wu's voice is eerily calm. We are well and truly fucked. How bad is it? Really bad, Sam. He begins stalking back and forth, a panther in a cage. They've level they've labeled us terrorists, and there's an APB out on us. I've heard this kind of announcement before. I know what comes with it. It doesn't matter if we have nothing to do with whatever city state. They're gonna hunt us down. It's open season. Isabella nudges the remains of Wu's PDA with a boot toe. And the two of us will be hunted down right alongside you. Gobbit's wide eyes and exits tight as a spring. You can hear the shallow panting as she leans towards one, then the other. We gotta go deep. Hit the mainland for a while until we can figure this out. The hole... Find a hole to crawl into. Gobbit looks at Isabel, wipes her mouth, and points at you and Duncan. We've got to get them off the grid too. Way off. The dwarf looks up at Duncan, her large eyes narrow. Hey, Lone Star, you've got a security license, right? That means that you've got a sin too. Wu's brow forest. Of course I have a sin. I wouldn't be able to get paid otherwise. I think criminals in low life go sinless. She runs her hand along his cyberdeck, thinking... That means you can be traced, both of you. You get spotted by a drone or a security camera, get ID'd by retinal scanners, or try to use your cred stick or passport, and the HKPF will know just where to find you. Wu crosses his arms across his chest. I know how system identification numbers work, runner. Etiquette Shadowrunners. 
We're gonna have to burn our sins if we're gonna survive this. The two women nod. You got that right, Seattle. We just... Gobbit pulls at her dreadlocks. We just as screwed as you are, me and Iz. We were less... We listed as your accomplices. And we can't afford for you to get caught. You'll lead them to us. One way or another, DNA samples, things we've told you, astral residue, I don't know, cop stuff. The little dagger looks from you to Wu, eyes narrowed, seizing you up. You can see her make a silent decision before she speaks, her voice that is flat and resigned. We need to get your sins burned, delete you from the records, all of them. All of them? Whoa, wait a minute. You want us to just erase our identities? Wu rubs her hand across his scalp. Beyond the fact that it isn't that it's insane, will that even work? If we burn our sins, go off the grid like that, they won't won't they just redouble their efforts to find us? Condescension seeps away into Isabel's dry tone. Imagine playing a game of hide and seek with a siren strapped to your head. Would you rather try and hide with the siren or with that, or with the siren conspicuously absent? Deleting our identities across the entire matrix sounds hard. The little Decker nods knowingly. It's very difficult. I can't do it. Some people can. Organizations. Expert systems. Gobbit's voice drops. We're gonna ask for help. There's only one person we know who has the kind of pull it takes to burn us in and hide us from the cops. Kindly Cheng. Who's Kindly Cheng? Some sort of super decker? No, Kindly's no decker. She's what's known as a straw sandal. Kind of a middle manager for the Yellow Lotus Syndicate. Their triad. Kindly Cheng controls all the illegal activity in our neighborhood. Smuggling, bootlegging, counterfeiting. Middle manager? Is the Yellow Lotus a syndicate or a retail outlet? Gobbit leans in, serious as death. Do not get the wrong impression. Kindly Chang is no bureaucrat. She controls a good size of the portion of Kulong's underworld. She has soldiers, resources, she's smart. And she is not to be underestimated. Isabella's voice is hollow and flat. Taking favors from a woman like Kindly Chen is a good way to get yourself into indentured servitude. You don't want to owe a favor to a woman like that. Her eyes get big, round. Ideally, you don't want to deal with her at all. That was Nightjar's job. Nightjar? You mean you work with her? We did just tell you. She got her fingers in everything, including brokering shadow runs for the corpse. Currently, Chang is our fixer. Cobra tries to make her voice light, confident. Just stay on a good side and you'll have nothing to worry about. Now let's get this done before one of you trips the APB and brings all hell upon us. You're about to leave the location and enter the subway system. Continue? Confirm. Sinless. You scramble up the ladder th and throw out the access way their sewer system spits you out into Hong Kong Mass Transit Railway System, the MTR. Crossing the rails, you climb up to the platform and into the station. Above you is Hoi where the rat shaman and the little decker plan to plead your case to Kindly Chang. The one woman they know who can help you get a, get underground and off-grid fast. But there, there'll be a price. Chang is a triad boss whose favors tend to come with strings attached. So, the sounds of waterfront at night leak down to the stairway to surface. Peering up to the steps, you can catch a glimpse of the night sky, overcast and low. The sewers deposit you into a series of mechanical access ways that eventually link you to the system of railway tunnels. Gobbit leads you through five or six magnetically sealed doors and access several sets of electrical tracks until she indicates you've reached your destination. She holds up her hand, indicating the surrounding platform. This is the MTR station of Huawei. Once you go up those stairs, you'll be in our neighborhood. Kindly Chang runs her operation out of a mahjong parlor there called Swift Winds. 
Wu rips off his goggles. There's an APB out on us. How do you expect us to, to get to the Swift Winds place without taking a bullet? Hawaii is well known for a protected area, kindly Cheng sees to that. As a shadow community, smugglers, hijackers, black marketeers, you get the idea. Cops tend to give you a place a wide berth. Isabel gives a shallow nod. Her gaze remains planted on the floor. Police cameras don't last long here. Between the smog and the cloud cover, we shouldn't have worry about drone surveillance either. The HKPF won't find you. Not if you follow our lead. Gobbit winds her stance, puts her hands on her hips. Now here's how this is going to work. You can't get an audience with Chang until we secure you an invitation. So me and Liz will have to go on ahead and pay our respects. Then we'll request that she see you. Politely. An invitation? How do we get that? The rash arm smirks. We'll kiss her ass until it shines. Isabel sighs. That's about the size of it. Gobbit holds up her hand. One more thing. Kindly Chang is dangerous woman. She may seem friendly, but do not let your guard drop. And whatever you do, do not disrespect her. Got it. She drops her hand. Nods to the three of you. That's it. We'll go on ahead and smooth the way. Just give us a few minute head start and don't talk to anyone. Why don't we just go with you? Because no one knows you're here and outsiders aren't welcome in Hawaii. Gobbit eyes woo up and down. Bless your friend, he is radiating cop. Cops are even less welcome here than outsiders. And you? You're not exactly ordinary either, are you? I like to think I have a certain flair. She smiles for the first time. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If people see us strolling through town together with no prior explanation, we might not make it to the Mahjong Piler at all. How do we how do we know that you're not just gonna bolt on us? She squints at you confused. Because we need your sins burned as badly as you do. And we need to figure out figure a way out of this shit, or we're all dead. Plus, we could use the muscle right now. Her voice turns sheepish. J just saying. She quickly turns away. See you at the Mahjong parlor. The shadow runner's footsteps quickly fall away, and then you're alone with Wu. He grunts something unintelligible, and begins panther stalking back and forth again, boot prints and sewer water and muck marking his path on the subway platform behind him. Minutes pass, Wu stops his pacing and runs both hands over his face, groaning a sound of anxiety and disgust. It dissipates and he stands there silently. His hands covering his face and should shudder and shoulders shaking with emotions. Then he begins to laugh. It's a laugh that can f that comes from deep down from a place where fear and frustration and impotence swirl. But the barrier holds. Where he's focused, taking control of his breath, and his laughter begins to slow. He becomes himself again. My God, Sam. An aftershock of laughter shudders through him. Are you fucking kidding me? What the hell are we doing here? How did we get into this? He drops his hands and turns to you, shaking his head in disbelief. I think I'm going to lose it. Go ahead. We're alone. We walks to the wall of the subway station silently. He stands there for a moment, lost in thought, and then his fists explode in a fury of punches. He hits the wall hard, sending plaster crumbling to the floor at his feet. The orc breaths heavily for a moment, head down, hand, hands on hips, spent. Carter is dead, Sam. They fucking ended her. He puts his hand to his forehead. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Just focus on finding Raymond. So that's it? Just throw Carter down the memory hole and bury her deep? My partner's death behind me and carry on like a good little lone soldier? He holds up his hands. Don't answer. His voice goes flat. He's done. It doesn't matter anymore. We're stuck in this country, surrounded by criminals. And the police, the police, are trying to blow our heads off. He grabs the back of his neck and squeezes. Screw it. Maybe I'll just sh just let, let him. You know why? Because we're gonna burn our sins, Sam. 
Jesus Christ, do you know what that means? The moment we do that, we're dead. To all the world, we're dead. We're wiped clean. He counts it off his fingers. Raymond's. Raymond, the house we grew up in, my career, Carter, all gone. No home, no money, no identity, nothing. He waves his hand, brushes it all away. We will be nobody. We were street kids, Duncan. We were used to nobody calling us. Just chill. Chill? What the fuck are you telling me to chill after what just happened? Aren't you losing what I'm about to lose either? Our paths went in different directions long ago. Wu's neck cranes forward. His jaw thrusts out ahead of him. You just... You left me behind, goddammit. You left me behind. You left me behind. Memories flash bright. Suddenly you're back eight years ago on the streets outside of Raymond's house. Just you and Wu. The middle of the night. You can't just leave like this, Sam. What am I going to say to Raymond? You know how he is. Yeah, I know he's inflexible. Exactly. We're breaking one of his rules just being outside the house after curfew. What is so important that you have to run out now in the middle of the night without telling Raymond why? He's distraught. You can see it on his face. Hear it in his voice. He used to be, he used to be lost without you. Truth. It's a job to... Uh, oh yeah, all of these are trees are... I need to see a guy about a deal. The good kind. The big kind. His eyes wide. A deal? I thought... I thought we left that shit behind us, Sam. Look, whatever's going on, I can tell you one thing. Raymond will not approve. I'll deal with that when I get back. I won't be gone long. Two, three days tops. You remember the look on Duncan's face as you walked away. The events that followed were a blur. One that you don't care to remember. Three days later, you were behind bars in a private corporate prison. No interrogation, no charges, no appeal. Years later, some corporate bought some other corporate and the new board of director pushed through some sort of reform agenda and the higher ups gave an order. And then you were out with a few hundred new yen to your name and one scary as hell non-disclosure agreement ensuring your silence. Not that it matters to you anymore. You started fresh, determined. Until Raymond tracked you down, left you that voicemail, Brought you to Hong Kong and back together with Duncan Wu. You realize that Wu's been staring at you. Now let's hear it. Where the hell have you been all this time? Why didn't you contact me? At least to tell me you were alive. I wanted to, Duncan, but I was locked up tight. Corporate black suit. No communication. No shit. He squints at you. Full lie detector mode. Oh fuck. I had no idea. A range of emotions play across Wu's face. He stares at the ground and some time before finally looking back up at you with a heavy sigh. <sighs> wow, I really don't know how to process that one right now. I... He shakes his head. I don't know. If we're still alive tomorrow, can we talk more? This shit is too much. We're marooned on this island, hunted by the corpse. My partner is dead, Raymond is missing, and we're about to see a crime lord about erasing our goddamn identities. And as a bonus, our only allies are a pair of tiny criminals who would kill us if they could so they didn't have to deal with us. He rubs his head viciously. <sighs> Listen, Sam. Back in the barracks, whatever I was out of control, you just handled the situation, remember? With Carter gone, I'm just raw nerve. I'm afraid I'm gonna slip back and people are gonna start getting hurt again. I got your back, Duncan. He stares at you hard like he's trying to see something inside your head. His voice comes out flat. We'll see. Just don't press it. I need time to get used to... you. Now let's go meet that triad woman and get our damn sins burnt. I want to rip off this badge as fast as I can. Way, a makeshift boat city latched to the Kai Turk riverfront as a parasite behind you. A massive snarl of darkness and derelict high-rises dominate the horizon. The walled city. 
The swift winds Mahjong parlor, filled with the stink of cigarette smoke, the incessant click-clack of Mahjong ties, the grim faces of hardened gamblers. Only Cheng. You can feel every eye on the room as you cross the Mahjong parlor to the middle-aged woman sitting patiently at its end. The click-clack of ivory-colored tile stops, hands stay beneath the table, into jacket pockets, behind backs. The woman has the face of a prison guard and the demeanor of an inmate. Her salt and pepper hair is pulled back into an iron hard bun and beneath it, two shiny black eyes offer nothing, button sewn on doll. A nearly empty bottle of something fell rests on her mahjong table, nestled between a pair of dirty shot glasses. Tiny puddles of brown linger at their bottoms. Gobbert and Isabel stand on, the, on either side of the table, heads lowered, shoulders slumped, hands collapsed, and risk a frightening glance at you at you as you approach. Currently Chang's voice is nasal and rusty me. My little pair of fuck ups here told me all about what happened at the docks. She drips a pinky into the shot glass, brings it to her mouth, removes it with a sharp smack. How tall are my best runners had their head put out? How you need protection? How you need to get your identities wiped before you get your heads put out too. Potentially leading the heat to my front door, placing me and everyone in my employ in danger. She fingers the rim of her glass. So wise, so very, very wise. The young shaman's eyes never leave the floor. We're sorry, Auntie. We thought her eyes, her black eyes flash. You mustn't speak until you're spoken to, Gobbit, dear. She smiles. The smile turns mean. And since your one short hair, away from being dumped into the river, chained to Isabel's corpse, I suggest you let your new friend here do the talking for a while. Does that make sense to you, dear? Her treckle voice is black, sweet, nasal and grinding. Dark circle rings Gobbit's armpits. Yes, auntie. Cheng inclines her head gently. Very good. You learn so quickly. Remain silent. She pours another drink. Her cheeks are rosy, already flushed. Now, my darlings, I understand from little rat shit here that you came from Seattle to meet with my client, Mr. Black. Rouge jaw tightens at the word client. Before you could find him, Hong Kong police force started splattering grey matter everywhere and everything went to shit. And now you'll need your sins burned so you can disappear before you end up dead too, is that right? Yes ma'am. Very good, why don't we start by telling me who you are? My name, my name is Sam McSamface the Five Fourths. The Five Quarters. Yes, I know that doesn't make sense mathematically, but it was funny and it seemed like a good idea at the time. And have you got a first name, McSam Face the Five Fourths? A profession? I mean, you do want me to erase your identities, don't you, dear? I'll need to know who you are first. Sam, I'm a mage of the Hermetic variety. She rests her chin on her hands. Interesting. I must say, I've never been partial to magicians myself too otherworldly for me and how did you become a mage sam picked it up young i've been in the cooler for a few Rue's brow forrows and shakes his head still can't believe it currently Cheng whips her head towards Wu, a nasty retort already on her lips but she stops sticks her sticks out her lower lip as she sizes him up she turns to her lieutenant standing behind her, nodding her approval. Looks like Gunshaw is in town. What's your name, Gunshaw? Wu's focus remains straight ahead. Duncan Wu. I'm a cop. Lone Star. I hear there were some fresh corpses found on the docks tonight. Smugglers, I believe. Didn't sound like Hong Kong police when I heard about it. You're doing Duke and Wu? 
Wu's eyes remain fixed at a spot on the wall behind her. He smolders. I identified myself as Lone Star, but they didn't stand down. They had their weapons. It was self-defense. She puckers her lips at him. Her voice sings on. I don't care, sweetie. They weren't my people. But now I know you're a life taker, Mr. Guncho. You are a friend here. She begins arranging my home tiles on the table in front of her. But now I'm curious. Why were you meeting Raymond Black at the docks last night? Raymond Black is our foster father. That makes her pause. Chang lifts her bottle of swill and, and eyes the label, connecting the dots in her own head. Interesting. A look of disgust pauses over her face. Sorry, kid, but he wasn't. He was looking like shit when I saw him. Eyes half open, dark circles around them, dragging his feet the whole bit. She tisks in displeasure. Your foster daddy was in a bad place. Sounds like he wasn't sleeping. Could be. From what he said, it sounds like he was having nightmares. He wouldn't stop in the middle of a sentence and mutter something to himself. One time it was about the walls breathing or something. Another time it was about teeth. Thousands of teeth. I remember him drifting off near the end of our meeting. It looks like he was off somewhere else in his head. He said, I left prosperity in there. Then Nightjar put his hand on Mr. Black's shoulders, asked him why he wanted to go into the Vault City so badly. That seemed to bring him back. When your old man opened his eyes, he was f they were full of, full of tears. Then he muttered something else I couldn't make out. She pours herself another shot, tosses it back and rubs her belly. Your daddy got really irritating after that, after a while. I can imagine. She grabs a long, slim cigar from a pack of mahjong tables and lights it. Alright. Let's get to it. She wails smoke and points two fingers at Wu. Your turn need your scent burned and you need them burnt fast. Hong Kong dragnets are bad news. When they roll, they roll in force. Armored personnel carriers, heavy armor, heavy weapons, sorcerers, the whole thing. Ain't coming to arrest you. She folds her arms, crosses her chest, the, and thin cigar bobs in her mouth as she speaks. Good news, I can help you. With a wave of my head, I can have your sins disappear. But you need to understand, my darlings, is that what you are asking for is not a simple request. Burning a sin isn't just deleting a number. It's wiping all references to your number from all over the world. Largest database. It's masking your mugshots in the facial re re a recognition database so that the first camera you walk past doesn't bring them down on you like a ton of bricks. It's covering our fucking tracks so that the act of burning your sin doesn't lead them right to us. It requires continuous and numerous co corporations and the UCAS government. Smoke rolls out of the dried boss's nose. It requires someone like me. Therefore, I, I need to make a choice. She takes another long drag of her cigar and gently places her palm on the flat of the table. Do I kill you and dispose of your bodies before the cops come looking for you? Or do you, do I help you burn your sin? Well, I've got two options here, and I think I might go with Shadow Runners. It seems like a better etiquette or a better thing to say than what a gang would say. You may want to think about your rep as a fixer. Two of your runners were taken down by the cops, and you have no idea why. Cheng rests her chin on her hand again and smiles at you coldly. So clever. So, so clever. Her chin stays on her hand, but her eyes look past you, surveying the yellow lotus soldiers in the room. Yes, I have been placed in a delicate situation, haven't I? Regardless, that's the situation whether you're alive or you're sucking dirt. She stares at you for a long time. Jim taps on the hand, thinking... Taps at... 
taps her ash on the floor without taking her eyes off you. A low, reluctant growl rumbles somewhere deep in her throat. You live. You're clever, and I like that. I'll put your sin to the to the torch. However, I will need to call in several val valuable favors within my network to do it, and those favors don't come cheap. Currently, Cheng stops out her cigar. You will owe me. Whatever you say, Auntie. Don't roll over so easily, my darling. People will think you're an ass kisser. It's unbecoming. I want you to deliver a message for me to the business associate in the wild in the wild city. The yellow lotus has a strong presence inside Sam. Isabel can tell you all about it, can't you, dear? Isabel grew up in the wild city. Isabel's eyes remain lowered. They collect taxes for the corporations, extort people protection money from shopkeepers, run drugs, guns, people. They hurt people. We do those things, yes, but to be fair, we also operate the world city's black market. You might not be alive today if it went for the lifeline that we provide. Isabel clams up tight. Cheng picks up a mahjong tile and turns it with her fingers. There is a red pole, a sort of enforcer, yes? On the inside, his name is Strangler Bow. Bow is a strong man, a good soldier, but he has forgotten his place. I need you to remind him. Want us to make an example of him? Did I say I wanted to make an example of him? No. I want you to deliver a message. She tosses your memory stick. Bring this to him in my name, and remember that Bow's men are my men. By right, they should all be serving me. Killing them would be a waste of resources. I have no use for dead soldiers. She turns the goblet in, Isabel. One of you will go with these two westerners to the wild city. Help them locate the bow and show them the ropes. The other will remain here with me. I have several menial degrading tasks that need doing around the establishment. No matter who goes or who stays, you'll both be you will both pay for bringing the APB to my doorstep. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. Now, I'm gonna find out who ordered the hit on Nightjar and do some dentistry on him with powerful tools. She closes her eyes and smiles with pleasure. That boy was my favorite. He sung to me sometimes. She opens her eyes again and sneers. <laughs> Now that's the one I didn't care about. Got shot. Was an asshole. She turns away and wipes you off with the back of her hand. That will be all, my darlings. Return to me when you are done. Thank you for the favor, auntie. She responds without turning back. You can thank me after you deliver my message to Bao. Then I'll do you the favor of erasing you. Right, how long have we been on for? Nearly two hours. Right, so I'm going to move here. Alrighty, and with that, I'm going to save it here. Save game. And I'm going to exit. Quit. I've already saved it. Once again, thank you very much for joining me. I love you all. And Dream Penguin wishes you the good ziggies.